Hello and welcome. 25 lakh students are going to appear in the NEET examination of 2024. This is over 4 lakh students more than the students who appeared in the last edition, that is 2023. So what does it really take to crack NEET? Uh, joining me now is someone who I have known for many years, Chetna Nathan, uh, an academic overachiever. Uh, who cracked NEET in 2021 and is now a student at the Gandhi Medical College in Hyderabad. Chetna, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I would want to ask you, uh, let's talk yeah, about the NEET of 2024 a little later. Let me start by asking you for students who are moving from class 10 to class 11 now. And if they are aspirants for NEET two years down the line uh, in 2026, what should the approach be for those students who are getting into class 11 right now? Uh, the first thing would be to keep your concept clear. Whatever is being taught, irrespective of which board you are in, just make sure you grasp all the concepts and it's not more of a rote learning. Try to mm. understand the fundamentals, focus on whatever is being taught in your class. As of uh, uh, ninth and 10th grade students, I personally do not feel that any special coaching is necessary as such. School work should be more than sufficient if you're doing it rigorously. Okay. No, I, uh, Chetna, I spoke about students who are moving into class 11, who are given the class 10 boards. The results will be announced in May, uh, but they would start kind of doing at least a bridge course or prepare or take admission into any of the uh, coaching institutes, etc. What should their approach be? through their 11th class and then in 12th class? Uh, again, it's pretty much the same, Uncle. Like, suppose you're joining a bridge course, just focus on whatever is being taught. And in case you are not able to find a bridge course in your vicinity, you can, mm -hmm. of course, uh, enroll for any online uh, class. There are a lot of online platforms which provide free uh, education for uh, 11th and 12th. You can begin with that. You can begin with the initial chapters and gradually work your way through it. Okay, now you joined a coaching institute, which was like, a, I mean, from morning till evening. And then they, you were also enrolled in the uh, Telangana State Board. You suggest that's a better option as compared to going to a regular CBSC or a regular ISC school and on the side doing uh, a bit of coaching either online or offline. Which do you think works better? Uh, I think it's a personal call. For me personally, uh, this worked better. But it depends on what kind of a learner you are, whether you are more, uh, whether, you, whether you learn better when it's self-learning or whether you like to be taught. So for me, it's a mix of both. I like to be taught in a systematic way and then I also require time to do my self-study. So it mm -hmm. depends on that. Online and offline per se, there is not much of a distinction. The amount of content and the content that is being taught is pretty much the same. It just mm -hmm. depends on with who, with who, which kind of a teacher you resonate with personally. Right. And what so, gives you time to study by yourself? Because self-study is very important. Absolutely. You spoke about self-study, Chetna. Now, when you talk about self-study, on an average, through class 11 and class 12, especially when it comes to class 12, how many hours of self-study do you prescribe is absolutely essential? I mean, like it's like the minimum number of hours that you need to put in. Quality time, I mean. Uh, I can't really quantify it, but uh, it should be enough that you can finish a substantial chunk of the portion. And at the mm -hmm. end of the week, you should be able to revise whatever is being taught. Uh, make sure that once you're back from your coaching or your school, whatever type of coaching you're going to, there mm -hmm. must be at least two and a half to three hours of self-study. And it should be quality uh, study time. You should be able to grasp whatever is being given. It shouldn't be just idly sitting in front of the book. Okay. Um... You spoke about the importance of self-study on a regular basis. Now, another thing which has to be done on a regular basis without skipping are the weekly tests, which all coaching institutes insist that you need to take. How important are these weekly tests and what do they really help you fine-tune? Uh, weekly tests are a good way to measure whether you understood whatever has been taught throughout the week. But mm -hmm. don't take it as a parameter for how you're going to fare in the final exam. It is not really a very good indicator because there are a lot of factors which play a role. Initially, when you give the weekly test, you're still learning time management. You are not mm. very thorough with the concept. Towards mm. the end, once you have finished a substantial chunk of the portion, the grand test would be a better way to gauge how you can fare in your finals. 
Okay, fine. Uh, now, uh, many students, uh, once they do fairly well in class 10, tend to take class 11 uh, a little lightly. They think class 12 is really the big thing since there are no board exams in class 11. How risky can that approach be and how would that adversely impact your chances for a position in the NEET uh, should you kind of take class 11 lightly? Uh, I don't think you should take class 11 lightly. It's nice to celebrate whatever success you have achieved in your 10th class, but it's also important to understand you can't carry the baggage of your success into your 11th and 12th because mm -hmm. most people who choose the stream would have likely been school toppers. So you're competing with a lot of students who are cerebrally equivalent to you at this point of time. So in yeah. 11th grade, it's very important to understand whatever is being taught. It might be new because for ICSE and CBSE students, there is a considerable amount of gap that is there between what is taught until your high school and what begins in 11th and 12th. But it's Absolutely. important to take your time, understand whatever is being taught to you. And if you're not understanding initially, there's nothing to be afraid of. You still have time. But put in consistent amount of work every single day, and that will add up in the end. OK, so uh, you said there is a, a significant gap between what is there till class 10 and then uh, the level at class uh, in class 11. With the help of examples, perhaps, Chetna, just tell us as to what would that gap be? And this would be pretty useful for students who have just finished with their class 10 board examinations, may not have started with their class 11, as to what that gap would be and how should they be prepared for that? Okay, the best example that I can think of is if you are irrespective of whether you are a PCD or a MPC student, would be mm. basics of differentiation and integration. That's mm. one thing we ICSC students have never come across in our entire uh, curriculum. And that mm. is something which forms the very preliminary basics of your 11th and 12th. A lot of mm. equations are derived using this. So we right. had absolutely no idea. So for, for those who do not know about this or have never heard about it before and they are, they've just entered 11th grade, and they mm. feel a little intimidated by physics or math, the best thing to do would be to uh, you know, use YouTube and social media for constructive purposes. You'll mm. find n number of channels on YouTube who, will, uh, who are available to explain this to you right from the basics for no yeah. cost at all. So try mm. to focus on your basics. Mm. There, are, um, there is one channel, Physics Wala. They have explained the, the fundamentals very clearly, and that will help you in the long run. OK, uh, now. Uh many students now how does a student really decide that okay i want to be a doctor and therefore i should take neat uh, because now that you have been what two years in a medical college and i would ask you about your life in a medical college uh, but is there something that a student before taking that big decision should also bear in mind uh, and then decide whether you want to go on this path or not uh, what I can say from my side is that whenever you choose a career, there are two ways to look at it, whether you are good at it and whether you can continue doing it for the rest of your life. And both are equally important. Hmm. Uh, it, it will be very unrealistic to try to do something you do not inherently have an aptitude for. Hmm. But if you are you know, very hardworking, you can overcome that. But the hmm. other factor that plays a role is whether you can continue doing it for the rest of your life. For the hmm. next 40, 50 years of that work, will you be able to carry on? So as a doctor, it requires you to study, put in long hours for a prolonged period of time. You have your yes. MBBS, you yes. have your specialty, you have your super specialization. So yes. it depends whether you are ready to be mm. so hardworking for such a long duration of time, because mm. there are a lot of other career options which will give you equal or if not more remuneration than what a doctor achieves. Absolutely. So you need to consider that. Yeah. OK, so uh, let me now ask you two specific questions. One is about the NEET 2024. We have about a little over a month for the examination. What should students do in the la that last lap, the last 30, 35 odd days uh, before the uh, examination? Because uh, unlike JE, which gives you two chances, this is a one examination kind of a chance. Uh, it's important to firstly not stress about it. Uh, mm -hmm. One month is more than enough to, you know, to make it your final uh, leg of preparation and to do well in the exam. Now mm -hmm. the focus should be on giving grand tests so that you analyze where you're going wrong. Analysis of the grand test is very important. I personally would go through both correct as well as incorrect questions 
because mm. often once you've done when you have just one month remaining it's very mm. likely that you have already gone through everything and the correct answer you might not be marking it out of concept but just mm. out of sheer memory that because you've done it for so long so yes. i would go through both the correct as well as incorrect but it's your personal choice incorrect mm. options uh, incorrect questions try to look at it the same day and try to understand whether it was a silly mistake or whether it was a conceptual problem if it was mm. a conceptual problem address that timely so that a stitch in time saves mine as they say so that you mm. don't have any new questions or a very panicky situation when you're attempting the final exam right okay and now tell us about your life in a medical college because that is also very important for students who are aspiring to get into a medical college would have some kind of preconceived notions as to what life would be in a medical college come hospital so tell us about the good things and the not so good things okay so uh uh one thing that i would like to tell everyone who is watching this to all students out there please put in your best efforts in 11th and 12th and get out of that vicious cycle because there is so much uh you know happiness that's waiting for you in your medical college it gives you time for yourself for your academics it's a lot less stressful than 11th and 12th is what i can say definitely but of mm. course it's not all roses and bushes there are a lot of thorns in the way as well mm. uh you need to put in effort these subjects are not very easy so you need to put in time a substantial amount of your day every day will still go in studying even now but there will still be a lot of time for you to focus on your personal development there are fest you have a big group of friends you can go out so it's it's really nice medical college is a completely different world and you will love coming in there okay but i mean are there i mean since you spoke about the fact that and we know that mbbs is a long journey and then you need to do your md or ms it's a long journey before you actually uh, become a doctor uh, to be taken seriously so does this long journey sometimes frustrate you definitely uh, i think in a week i would at least have two to three burnouts and it's very common to get burnt out even uh, initially once you enter medical school because the subjects are so vast and a lot of times uh, you need to study multiple books which are you know not really very thin they are quite thick books you need to put in a lot of effort to understand but the results you reap after that once you understand something and you know that this is how the body works i think it's a very gratifying experience okay so how many hours of self study do you still do now apart from the hours in college um around 2 to 3 i still try to put in but yes okay. i now i give uh, more attention to my rest and my health i think those are things that i had neglected in my intermediate and uh, i wouldn't recommend anyone to do that so now my focus is on my health mental and physical and then i put my studies now right okay chetna thank you very much for your time and fantastic tips extremely articulate very happy to see you articulating so well my best wishes and blessings thank you very much thank you so much for having me thank you